Welcome back to the 21 Convention 2019 of Warsaw, Poland. Our next speaker is a returning speaker to the 21 Convention stage, this being his third time here now in Warsaw, Poland. Over 55 million women from around the world love this man for teaching them how to be beautiful. Without further ado, please let me welcome to the stage the panty dropping Chad Jesus, master of disaster, Alexander Juan Antonio Cortez. All right, gentlemen, let me give my thanks to Anthony, first off, for creating this whole event, creating this whole continuum. Um, yeah, so the mass spear is in something, I'm just going to launch into this. The mass spear is in something of a liminal state right now. You've heard everyone else speak, and I don't want to give a rehash presentation of you know, how we got here. I think at this stage of the game, you men that are here, you're very self-aware, you have some sense of how society has arrived into the place that it's in. So what I want to focus on and sort of broaden is, when we talk about using red pill, when we talk about you know, essentially trying to be a man that succeeds in the world, what are we really aiming for and how do we establish ourselves in relationship with reality itself? So I call that the, the ascendant man. Man is always going to be something that is aspirational. We're always trying to improve ourselves. We're always trying to be better. Now, we're at a state currently where, oh, it's like half a face. So we have to deal with this kind of guy on a daily basis. And this is kind of the state of Western man, which is basically just a defective faggot. You know, to be very politically correct. This is what we're dealing with. This, this is, I won't say the enemy, but this is basically your standard Western man. And he's emasculated, he's neutered. Everyone hates him, but he's useful because he's a cog in the machine. This is the current state of Europe. So you all got fucked and fucking sold out by your leader, certainly in Western Europe. Central and Eastern, not really, but Western Europe, this is the state it's in. Yeah, it's bad. This is the state of modern Western woman. She will ride the cock carousel 10,000 times. There is no sense of shame. There is no sense of dignity. There is no really sense of self-respect. Everything goes because everything's equal. This is a bell curve. And I bring this out because you know, despite everything that's happened, human behavior still falls on a scale. You know, it's very common in the, the male space where uh, because of you know, the overemphasis, I think, on hypergamy, the overemphasis on sort of this, the, the evils of human beings, we get into the state of, you know, all women are whores, we're all going to get screwed over because yeah, that's how it works. The reality is that human, being, human beings, our behavior always falls on a spectrum. Um, you know, what I've seen in the sexual marketplace today, you have women where this is sort of like the 10,000 cock carousel of bad women, bad girls. Then you have the good girls over here, and it goes in a wave. And it's a very fat tail distribution. Historically, it would have been pushed more this way. Now it's very spread out. So you need to have a sense of awareness about you when you're navigating the sexual marketplace as to what are you getting yourself into. You don't want to make a bad decision. Technology has had this effect of diluting both masculine and femininity. This is by H.R. Geiger, um, sort of me a techno-modern art. We're all fed into the hyper-capitalized machine at this point. Everybody is. You are a cog in the machine. You are something to be taxed. You are something to be extracted from. You are something to be sold to. You are made to consume and consume and consume and consume. And you will do this the day you die. Um, you know, how do you break out of that? You can step back from it, but you're not going to go start a new civilization on your own. But it's good to be aware of it. This is the molecule testosterone. Testosterone levels have plummeted somewhere around 30-40% for Western man in the last 40 years. Why? Environmental estrogens, obesity, lack of exercise. I think birth control compounded over like second, third order effects has had an effect. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Solar radiation has dropped uh, the last few years. You know, solar radiation goes in a cycle. When there's more solar radiation basically from the sun, testosterone levels go up. When there's less, it goes down. So you know, we're, all driven, we're all affected by all these things. You know, what can we do? We can't attend to our health, but we can only do so much relative to ourselves. Man has two things he needs to be able to do. These are your two basic things. Biological necessity. 
You need to be able to protect yourself. Flat out, if you don't protect yourself, you're dead. Game's over. Every man that's born on this earth from 5 million BC till now, you need to be able to protect yourself. And Donovan's, his tactical virtues really derive from that. If you can protect yourself, you can provide for yourself because you have a means to act upon the world. You have strength, you have force. This is the primordial battle. This is a great movie, great or red pill movie, you want to call it that. Um, what's it called, Into the Gray? But Yeah, the gray, thank you. But this is Liam Neeson, and he's fighting against nature. He's fighting against nature, and nature wins. And that's the fundamental battle. And historically speaking, women loved men who were fucking violent, and they still do. Women love men who are violent. Women love men who can fight against nature because that makes things safe. That makes things safe. That provides security. Women will always love violent men. If you want to hack right now from the whole presentation as to how to be better with women and to just be a better man, go learn violence. Go learn how to shoot. Go learn how to fight. Go get hit in the face and feel, have that sense that you are dangerous. That will automatically upgrade your life on every level. Just do that. I, I could say nothing else but that, but do that. We all look up to this man because this man, he is warring against nature. He's warring against man. He might be in a battle against himself. And this is sort of the hierarchy, the classical hierarchy, as I call it, of man's conflicts. We start off in nature, we conquer nature. And then it's man against man, and we start killing each other. And then we sort of get man against himself, and then we get a level of philosophy, we get a level of extrapolation. We get the Greeks, we get the Romans, we get, um, you know, you could say even, you know, classical you know, or ancient Chinese. You get all these philosophies where people start thinking about the world and what it means. But we can't think, we can't have these higher virtues unless we are stable, safe first. And then when we're at, where, where we are today is that we're at man versus woman, or woman versus man, where because we're in a hyper-capitalized tech, uh, you know, techno-corporate world where everybody works and everybody gets taxed and everybody, everybody has skin in the game, everybody competes with each other. So there's no longer the conventional, classical, natural separation between man and between women. Everyone's just thrown into the pit together. The way of men, and I, I just want to give credit for Donovan um, for just helping me think about this stuff a few years ago. For all of you guys who have not read his book, re read his books. Um, you know, he goes into that much more than myself. Your grandfather and your ancestors didn't need red pill. So this has been an argument that's swirled around, you know, myself. Is, is Ajax red pill? Is he not red pill? I, am based, I base my beliefs on reality. Red pill, foundationally, fundamentally, is based upon reality. We have men that exist in states of delusion. They break out of that delusion and they realize that their prior, prior beliefs were painful. We have that, though, today, though, not because it's top down, because red pill is what we relied upon for thousands of years, but because we've had men that have to take a step back and see the world and realize, like, shit is fucked up. So it's a top down effect. And not all of it's Lindy in the sense it's all proven out. Historically, red pill was just called reality. In, in violent, natural, conservative, traditional, whatever you want to call it, cultures, women expect men to act like men. The Polish women here expect the men to act like men, more or less. If you go to, you go to Romania, you expect the men to act like men. You go to anywhere in Eastern Europe, men act like men. You go to South America, you go to Mexico, men act like men. It's a given. You don't need to tell a guy, hey, a woman expects you to lead. They want to do that already, and the woman, she's going to make she's going to make you do that. She'll bust your balls if you don't do that. But we live in the Western world, and things are confused. We don't have that kind of intersexual cooperation. We have competition. Now, this is one of the aspirations a lot of guys aspire to, and rightly so. Men want to fuck a lot of women. We have you know, hypergamy. Women want to fuck tall guys, basically. They're violent. There, that's hypergamy in a nutshell. Women just want to fuck a lot of women. I mean, men want to fuck a lot of women. Excuse me. Women, some women want to fuck women, too. That's great. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. If you make this your goal, historically, you got this because you either killed a lot of guys or you had an army that killed a lot of guys, and you won. You were, like, you were at the very top of the pyramid. Very few men historically had this. And this is a lot of fucking work to manage. In ancient China, Genghis Khan, he had all these concubines. Um, you know, that's a very historical thing in, Indi in India, in Japan, in all these countries. H how did they protect their harems? How did they keep these women from getting fucked by other men? They had eunuchs. They had men they'd cut their balls off. And like, th those, were guys, th those guys, those ballless men, were responsible for making sure the women didn't, didn't get fucked by other men. And I bring this up because Yes, sexual abundance is fucking awesome. We all, we all, in a fantasy world, if we could just fuck everything every day, that, that, isn't that great? Men that do that don't actually produce anything past a certain point. We have sex. We're driven by sex. Yes. We're also driven by the means to produce. We're also driven by the desire to protect. We're also driven by the, 
desire to be amongst other men and have camaraderie. Men like to build shit. Men like to create shit. So we have these instincts, and it's all part of our, our biology. And it's, it's not just this. This is an aspect of it, but it's not the whole thing. We also have this instinct, which is called pair bonding, which I, I, I use the term dyadic. Um, a dyad is two people that cooperate and get along. Men like to have friends. We all want a bro. We want a best friend. Men like to bond with women. We might, like, we might fuck it up. We might want to cheat. We might want to go fuck other women. But we actually like having a person that we feel we're invested in. And we can't get away from that. This is from India, and I forget the, the couple's names. But basically, the uh, builder of the Taj Mahal, um, he was the emperor of India. He had three wives. He had one that he had 14, women, 14 children with, which was this woman. He had two other wives. He had one kid with them, and then basically said, fuck off. I won't have to deal with you anymore. And then he built that for her when she died. And I've always found this interesting because this is a man who you could say, oh, that's fucking blue pill. This guy was literally the richest man in the world with the biggest army in the world. And his crowning achievement was the thing that he built for his dead wife. I guess he loved her. Yeah, what, what, what a bitch. We have to take a step back from this material sometimes where that de-emphasizes romance. People like to be romantic because love makes things good. You can't have love in the world if things are shitty. You know, men that are, when we go out and we kill, we create, we create stability, we have a village. We produce all these things. We do so so we can enjoy ourselves. We have Bible, Song of Solomon. This is basically just a whole thing on how to love a woman, how a woman should love a man. So being pair bonded, that's a very ancient idea. Men are both things. We can be pair bonded. We can have a harem. We can have something in between. We have a whole spectrum of being that is available to us. So you get to pick and choose what you want to be. You have that destiny, and it's in your hands. This is a village. This takes work to build, obviously. This village, there's probably not a guy with a harem. There's probably a bunch of couples. This is the historical model that is bottoms up, where for most of human history in most places, this is what works best. Now, we have screwed this up in a lot of ways, but everyone kind of wishes to get back from this, I, or back to this. I said yesterday or a few days ago, the American dream, the American dream now is to not have to participate in the American dream. <laughs> That's the dream now. It's to fuck off. I won't have to fucking work for corporate culture. I won't have to sit at a desk. I just want to go have land and have, have a wife and chickens and cattle and have some Tradcon woman, and I don't have to deal with any of this shit. Yeah, that's, that's the dream now. Yeah, that, that, this, that was reality then. Yeah, now it's sort of this ideal, yeah, which, again, goes to show you how far, how far we've gone sideways of our being. So you know, beyond red pill. This is the fundamental stuff that I think it's you know, sort of overlooked or just overcomplicated. Men no longer understand women because men no longer understand themselves. Men that act like, men that are violent, that lead, that are strong, that don't compromise, that push back, that create tension, uh, they don't struggle with women too much. They'll have, yeah, maybe they'll still get cheated on because whatever. Yeah, maybe they'll get into arguments. But when I think of someone like my father, my father's family, like, you know, especially you know, his backside, uh, they all love women and they had great relationships their whole life because they acted like men. They, they, this, they were men. If finding out that women like tall men who can fucking fight was surprising to you, you've got bigger problems than women. Yeah, and this, is, this is why, you know, again, the thing with the hypergamy. Why is that shocking? Why is that surprising? Why? Women want men who can compete. If women literally fucked anyone that was inter interested in them, you'd have no incentive to do fucking anything. Hey, I'm 5'6", I'm 40% I'm body fat. You want to fuck me? Yeah, okay. That's hell. That's literally living in hell. Or maybe that's porn that someone gets off on. I don't know. Yeah, women, yeah, so women love capable men. Violence beats height. And I say this because I always get annoyed when people will tell me something like, oh, well, you're, you're attractive, you're, you're tall. Women like tall guys. Yeah, you're playing on easy mode. No, I'm playing on easy mode because I act like a man. I know men who are MMA fighters who are 5'5". Five five. They get all the pussy they want. I have best friends of mine who are 5'1", and their wife is 5'7". And apparently a woman wanted to fuck them, despite them being short. But you know what? They act like men. So the woman doesn't give a shit. Height is only a problem if you make it a problem. So that's, just, that's an excuse that guys like to use. Women rely on men to make life good. Traditionally, that requires, again, violence. This is where we get into the nature of women and nature of men. Violence is explicit. It's seen. It's witnessed. It's visceral, you can feel it, it's painful, it takes things apart. Men fight and women watch men fight. Women watch you all the time. Men are explicit. We explain things, we want to use words, we want to be logical. 
Women are implicit. They watch, they observe, and then when they have your ear, then they know how to manipulate you. you know, why is that? Because a woman can't fight you physically, but she can try to affect you mentally. So, but that has to have a level of covertness to it. It has to. Otherwise, she tried to, if she tried to explain things logically, well, then you could argue back. If she can annoy you, if she can create tension, now she can start to change your mind in her favor. And that's not a bad thing. And men actually enjoy doing that. We like that interplay. We like it when things are a game that way. So we have this. We have the hero's journey. And this is what every man is, you know, so to speak, on once he enters, in, enters into the spear. You have the ordinary world. You realize something's wrong. You have a call to adventure. You have something that makes you realize, OK, I think I actually want to go counter to what I've been led to believe. And you might refuse that. You might have you know, dissonance with it. You don't actually want to do that. You'd, you'd rather stick with what you know. You have a meeting with a mentor. You have somebody where, OK, this guy is going to point me in the direction where he, I'm going to cross the threshold now. Everybody needs a mentor. Men need role models. Men need fathers that way. You need someone to be paternal to you. You can't raise yourself with everything that you do. You cross the threshold. OK, now maybe you've been red-pilled. The veil has been pulled back. You can see you're not blind anymore. You realize that there's allies, there's enemies against men, you know, men are under attack. And you realize all these socio-political things, okay. And then you get somewhere in here, and this is where a lot of guys get lost. Because to have, an or to have the ordeal happen, to have death happen, to have rebirth, you have to be willing to shed your pain and shed your trauma and shed the things that held you back. Complaining about single moms that burned you, that's not shedding your pain. Your wife divorced you and divorce raped you, that does suck, I'm sympathetic to that you being afraid of that, that's not going to help you move forward. Everyone is going to be hurt in this world. You are a man. You were born to suffer, and you'll be made to suffer, and suffer you shall. That is going to fucking happen. So you have to accept that and learn how to process that pain and make it useful. Otherwise, you'll be destroyed. You'll be destroyed, you'll be broken, you'll be killed, and you'll be cast aside because you are, at the end of the day, disposable, and everybody is disposable. If you can do that, though, you get reward. You get to seize your sword, which metaphorically, you can basically get your dick back. And then you have the road back, you have some resurrection, and hopefully you end up living in the same world that you were in prior, but now you're in a better place. Now you know what the truth is. The red pill, manosphere, originally started around the concept for a lot of guys of just basically getting laid. That's one of man's big struggles. You gotta get laid. And you know, this is Neil Strauss. I like Neil. Neil, though, Neil, though was a 40-year-old, 40 40-something 40 guy who was basically trying to talk to girls for the first time. So, and I point this out not to, not to shit on him. This is not a criticism, criticism of him. He had, he's had an amazing career. But if you're going to pick a role model, don't pick other men. Pick ideals. Men that have been damaged, men that have trauma, men that have disorders, men that are you know, unable to let go of whatever it was that hurt them, they're going to mislead you at times because they're still dealing with what they're dealing with. So you have to be cognizant of that. Now, this is why I joke around a lot with like the day-to-day -day conversation. Um, with like the male spear stuff, it basically comes down to girls are mean. No shit, really. Did you go to elementary school? This is basic stuff, guys. It's not worth spending time on. Women like to ha get men with money. They'll divorce rape you. No shit, really. Why is that surprising? So if a woman marries you and you got money or just, you know, you have an income and she goes to court, she's going to act in her best interest. Why is that surprising? So women act in their best interest. Why would, why would a woman serve her own interest? God, like, guys, like, let, let's, you know, this is, you know, I'm, I hope I'm speaking, being rhetorical here, but these, again, these are basic axiomatic human principles. People are always going to serve their own self-interest. You are going to do what's best for you, and you should. Everyone should. You might have to compromise that, but this shouldn't be shocking to you. So we have these things that sort of have held, this, held the spear back. We have like the Medusa thing, all women are evil, you're always going to get fucked over, um, don't get married, black pill, you know, mig toe, okay, I'm like, it. you just made yourself obsolete, great. You have this struggle psychologically with Madonna and whore. So men, when they realize that women are sexual, they realize that women cheat, they realize that women are fucking nasty, you have to reconcile that. You treating your wife like a good girl and then wanting to you know, go fuck bad girls, your wife could have been a bad girl for you. So could your girlfriend. But you have this separation with the two. And we have to realize that women, like men, can be all things. Men and women are all things. You have the capacity to be all things. It's not just one or the other. You have the mommy-girlfriend phenomena, which is another thing I see in the spirit. A lot of guys struggle with. 
They want a woman to make them feel special. You're my special man. You're my king. I adore you. You're acting like a little boy. You, you, men who are raised by their mothers where they want that female validation and they crave it, they need that direction, they get older, maybe they get sort of red-pilled, they learn how to get laid, they still want a woman that's going to treat them like their mom. They still want someone that's going to never argue with them and there's not going to be any tension and she's never going to tell him what to do and it's just going to be easy. It, no relationships are easy between men or women. That's not how it works. How many, how, how many times have you ever wanted to fight with your bro? If you've never had a bro friend that you want to fucking knock the fuck out, you've never had a real friendship. Those things happen. There's always conflict that way. You also have attachment disorders. And these are men who they were raised by, let's say, like psychopathic women. Maybe they're raised by a Medusa woman. Maybe their mom bitched out their dad. And they end up being mom haters. They watch their parents get divorced, their you know, father's destroyed. And now they don't want to attach to anybody at all because they're afraid of being hurt. And again, that's valid, but this is not really red pill. This is just your fucking trauma that you don't know how to process. Like, you have to get over these things. You have to address them accordingly and mature beyond them. Fundamentally, women and men, they're complementary. The only reason that we know what masculinity is is because we can contrast ourselves with women and vice versa. We would not exist otherwise. All men internally, you have an internal anima. You have some model of what you think a woman is. That might be an accurate model. That might be an inaccurate model that has false beliefs attached to it. Women, women have the same thing. It's often said that you know, women are not really red pill, uh, or, women, or women, all women are red pill. Women are not red pill. Women are very, very, very blue pill. The fact that you can have women today that think they can have kids at 35, that they're going to get a level 10 guy despite being a level 2 girl, that they're automatically going to get love, that if they leave with sex, the guy's going to love them, that's delusion. That's not accuracy. This is a representation of um, Athena. Athena is a goddess of wisdom in Greek philosophy. I always found that fascinating because you know, traditionally we associate intelligence wisdom with men, but in Greek philosophy it's a woman. Why is that? Because if you are a man and you have clarity of who you are, women will be able to give you guidance and infer a direction to you. So women will inform your wisdom if, if you are that kind of man. If you're not, they're just going to mislead you. But that, I think, is the goal for most men. You, if you can get to a place where women are a complete complement to your life and they increase the prosperity, you're doing good. That's what we all kind of want. We don't want women to be stressful. We won't, don't want to have anxiety. What we have to remember, too, is that human beings are mimetic. Women are always going to follow what you do. If you don't lead, then they're going to try and lead. If you act like a bitch, they're going to try to be more masculine to compensate. You, you see this in you know, like places like Germany. We're always going to mimic each other's behavior. Ideally, they mimic us in such a way that is ideal for both us and them. If we don't do that, and we essentially act like the worst version of a woman, we're going to be in a bad situation. I like this picture because it's Conan. He's probably going to kill a bunch of fucking dudes right now. You know, the woman, is, she's behind him, and she, she looks hot. You know, she's, you know, he's buffed as fuck. She's probably going to fuck him later after he kills all those people. Why? Because this is basically the natural order of things. This is how it goes. Now, obviously, you can't all do this on a day-to-day basis, even though we probably all fantasize about it. But, but we can at least metaphorically embody this. This is also why I have long hair. Because I, I used to watch this cartoon when I was a little kid. Um, I was like five, six, seven. Conan, you know, he's pretty jacked. Girls liked him. He had long hair. I'm like, I want long hair. So that's, <laughs> they, uh, that, that was that rationale. And then that, that never went away. It never, ever went away. So modern men and their problems. So now we're actually going to get to like, you know, the, the practical stuff that I banged out here with this. So we have sort of these tactical virtues. We want men who can lead. But with women, you're deferential to women. So you're not in a position of leadership. So you're failing. Women like men who are courageous. But women make you anxious. And then you act like you're afraid. Now you're failing. Women like men that have mastery. Women like geeks. Women like guys who are good at things. But then around women, you don't notice shit. You don't notice a fucking thing. I've been training clients for 10 years. I don't think I've ever seen a couple that was about to divorce and get a divorce where the guy wasn't oblivious. And I talked to the wife, right? I have my female clients come in and they talk to me. My husband doesn't notice this and I wish he'd pay attention to that. I just don't know why he doesn't get this. And it's just this litany of complaints and he just he doesn't see any of this. He doesn't see any of this. He has no idea what his wife's needs actually are. So then she goes and cheats. Yeah, I was talking about this with Steve the Dean yesterday. And women don't just go looking for dick. It's not just, oh, I need to get fucked by somebody else. They want someone that's going to listen to them. They want someone that's going to attend to their emotional needs. They want a man that's going to be fun to be around because their husband's been boring and fucking predictable for 10 years. 
So it's all these things. And then honor. And like, what does honor have to do with women? When you disrespect yourself to accommodate her, you're not honorable anymore. You're not. So women will look at men who are honorable. Women will look at men who have the respect of other men. Like, wow, look at this guy. Men look up to him. He, he's a leader amongst men. That's the ultimate hack for game. If you, you want to really attract women to, be a leader amongst men. Because then you've already qualified yourself against everybody else. You're the top of the pyramid. So a woman meets you. Oh, wow, I'm going to meet this guy. And he's, you know, maybe, let's say, man, you know, man, a man in uniform. He's a Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL's pretty badass, right? Then he acts like a total bitch with his wife or with the girl. And you know what? She's still going to get a good guy. She's still going to get the dangerous man. But now she knows she can run him. So he's going to disrespect himself to adjust to her behavior. So again, failure. And, but these, are, and these things are obvious. If you, would ha if you had upheld the stuff, you wouldn't be dealing with these problems. This is Jack Dempsey. He's being a man to death. There's a woman in the audience. He probably got laid after this. Again, I'm just going to keep emphasizing this. You, you need to uphold this kind of standard as much as possible. Men that have stand if you have standards, you force the woman around you in your life to have standards. Yeah, by default. This is Zorro. I put this in here because I like this movie, because we have the same name in this movie. And he also, uh, his last name in this movie is my hometown. But this is a good representation of the hero, you know, by way of basically this being heroic, he gets a girl. And heroes usually end up with hot women. Why? Because the man that saves the world gets the best of the best. Here's another role model. Since people always think like, oh, you're being very virtuous. No, you could be a crazy psycho motherfucker. You're still going to get a hot girl. Yeah, because fundamentally, women like men that make them feel something. Joker is a complete psycho. Joker is the ultimate psycho. I love Joker. I love Joker. I love that character. Now, this movie was kind of shitty, but it did show a good model of how a guy can be dysfunctional, fucked up, aberrant in society, but women are still going to want to fuck him. You know why? Because he makes them feel something. Boring, predictable, predictable men that accommodate, you don't make her feel anything. Now, he's not safe to be with. We would not characterize this as a, as a healthy relationship. But do, do we doubt that she's devoted to him? No, we don't. Now, this is Beauty and the Beast, one of my favorite movies. I love this movie because it illustrates kind of the perfect female fantasy, where the woman, she gets the guy that's super beastly, super primal, super rough, doesn't know basically how to act right, but then he's gentle with her and not anybody else. She's the thing that gets him to love something. Now, the funny thing about this is that the Beast and Gaston, they're pretty much the same character. He's a super burly, brawny, buff guy. I get told sometimes, oh, you look like Gaston. I'm like, fuck, whatever. Um, I got told that in high school all the time. You know, but this guy, he's got, you know, chest hair, all this shit. You know, he's big. But, but he fucks himself. You know why? Because he wants her attention. And she's intelligent. And she realizes that he's kind of fucking dumb. And she's never going to be able to look up to him because he's stupid. So despite all his alpha qualities, because alpha is, it's just, alpha is not you know, a thing, it's really just sort of a placeholder, despite all his seemingly alpha qualities, she has zero interest in him. None. But she goes with this guy because he has a fucking library. <laughs> women like different things in men. And this, you know, this is speaking to the spectrum of women. Um, again, like this fallacies and sort of red pill shit. Women who are extroverted, who are 25, they're going to be looking for something else than a girl who is 23 and introverted and is going to school because she wants to be a doctor. Women look for different qualities. Yeah, and this seems very idealistic. Like, oh, really, you know, this Beauty and the Beast? No, because this is a girl who's intelligent, she's smart, and she's looking for something very specific. And that does actually exist. That does exist. You know, but, you know, again, it's a fantasy. But it's a good representation of the ideal female fantasy. I get a man with all the qualities I want, none of the things I really don't. I help him transform. I get all his shit, since he, he's rich, obviously. So she gets all the abundance. And I'm going to feel safe with him. Um, he's always going to be interesting. And he's, always, he's never really going to love anyone but me. At the same time, he could have anyone he fucking wants, you know, once he's sort of that man. So you get the best of both worlds. Does that actually happen in real life? Not really. But if you can um, embody that, wh whatever you want to call it, alpha, beta kind of quality, you're going to do well. And then at the end, he's human. And yeah. Now, you could want this. You could want monogamy. Cool. You could want this. We all kind of want this at times. He's getting jerked off by three different women. Wow, that's amazing. Which one's it going to be for you? Whatever you want. 
whatever you want. I'm not, you know, I'm not the one to tell you that. You, know, you decide how you want your life to go. But the principles, the axioms, as we finally get to them, they're, they're all the same. It doesn't matter. Axiom number one that I want all you guys to keep in mind throughout all this, the map is not the territory. It's only representation. All of the game theory you can read, all the psychology, all the red pill, all, whatever you read, doesn't matter. It's giving you a map to navigate the world at large. It is not the world itself. This is a map of the local area around Warsaw. This doesn't actually tell me anything about Warsaw. This doesn't really tell me, OK, I can kind of know where north, south, east, west is. There's roads. Yeah, I could probably get around a little bit you know, looking at the streets if I'm looking at this. But I don't want to be staring at this thinking it's all of this. You have to be able to extrapolate and apply it to you know, real life. Axiom two, what you fear will always have the keys to destroying you. And this is another thing is sort of a sentiment I see at times. If you're afraid of women, you're always going to struggle. You might get laid. That's not hard to do. Like getting, sex is the easiest thing in the world if you're not dysfunctional. You might, so you might get sex. You might, you know, sort of have those loose ties. If you're fundamentally afraid of being hurt and fear of loss and fear of losing, oh, God, I'm going to be destroyed and divorce raped. And, you know, I, I see guys online now, they're probably in their 20s, and they're worried about, uh, you know, a woman, I don't know, having kids with them and then fucking them over later. I'm like, bro, you're 24. What, like, what are you worried about? What you fear can always destroy you because you're afraid of it. And women can smell fear. They can smell it. They can see it on you. It comes off you in waves. And you're easy to control. We like to think that if we get red-pilled, that you know, we're in the driver's seat. We're the ones controlling the situation. Women manipulate men just as much, actually more so, than men manipulate women. Women know how to press buttons. They know what to say. And if they're perceptive, even if they're not a malevolent girl, if they're perceptive and they're around a guy enough, they know how to make you respond. And again, that's OK. You want, that's, that's what human bonding is. But if you're going to every situation, every interaction with that fear that underlays it, all of times that's your foundation, you're fucking yourself over. Axiom three. Men that are blind to themselves or blind to the nature of women by default. Leadership, courage, mastery, honor, violence. We talk about these things. These are things that are inherent to a man's being. You know, but going back to the, like, the very first slide, a lot of men today don't have those elements of themselves. So of course you're going to struggle with women. You don't understand what you are. Yeah, and this is, this is the real, I think, you know, meta-level awakening of what Red Pill started as, or PI and all this stuff. It's men that are realizing their capacity to be a man puts them into a complementary relationship with women. A man that understands himself, he will understand femininity, not by default, but understand it by way of being able to perceive it accurately for the first time. Axiom four. Masculinity is the force that creates the world, and women inhabit that world. That's frame. That's what frame really is. You have a life that you create for yourself. Let's say you meet a woman. Let's say you want to be monogamous. I want you to be a part of my life. You're complimentary to it. So I'm, 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 I'm choosing you. I'm in that position where, yes, I'll be together, but you're within, you're within the world I want to create, and let's create something you know, greater than the sum of the parts. If you are the guy where you are not putting, let's say, the woman on the pedestal, but you're putting the pussy on the pedestal, and you, oh, I think I found my dream girl. This is where you know, men sort of screw themselves over with sort of like a soulmate fallacy um, you know, excessively. Well, now you're in her world. You know, so whose frame are you in? And, you, and here's the thing to this. If you go to a home, home traditionally is the place where women you know, sort of run the show. We, ha we have separation that way. We have the external world. We have the world of the home that women you know, manage. And that, that's a good balance. But you can tell when you meet a man, he's run by his wife, he's run by his woman, or he's really reacting to her. He doesn't have the frame. Either you react to her or she reacts to you. It's one or the other. And ideally, if you're together long enough, you sort of know what the other one's you know, already doing. But I've not been married, so I'm not going to go that far with it. Axiom number five, only a man can tell a woman how to act. And then axiom number six, women are implicit, men are explicit. It's a beautiful woman from James Bond. She, in this scene, this is from um, Spectre, which is not very good, but there's a few good parts in it. She's looking at him, so she's following what he's doing. Women will behave in accordance to the standard that you set. They will. A girl has a drag down, screaming, shout out reaction to you. You, you could take that and shy away. You could tell her that, no, not, that's not OK, and I'm going to fucking leave right now. You know, pick one. It is that simple on a basic level. You accept the standard of behavior. You, know, you create the standard of behavior. She's going to respond accordingly. And women know when they can browbeat men and tell them what to do, and they know when they can't. There's a thing with tension and resistance. You want tension in a relationship. 
you want the woman to feel a little bit insecure. You want her to be both connected to you, but be unsure of you at times. You want to be able to surprise her. Tension's healthy. Resistance, if a woman is resisting, this, she has made up her mind that it's going to be her way, you lost the game already. You lost the game. Women are implicit, men are explicit. Women want men who can get it. What does get it mean? It means you pay attention to them, and they don't have to explain shit to you. If you're asking a woman what she's thinking, how she's feeling, and you literally need it laid out, like step by step, oh, you so fucked up. You so fucked up. And she knows it too. She's like, this guy, like, he doesn't understand me at all. Axiom seven. I said this earlier, he who makes her feel the most wins. On a very basic level, human beings are driven by emotion. Good emotion, bad emotion. Whoever makes her feel the most, and this is sort of like you know, sort of the alpha ghost kind of idea, the guy who made her feel the most, she's, that's the guy that she's going to remember. Now, she might marry a man later on who's predictable and boring, but you know, he's stable, but she's still going to reminisce about well, that guy who was romantic, who was that, you know, that whirlwind kind of either romance or thrill, whether sexually, psychologically, etc. She remembers that. And it's not hard to be that guy, but you need to be aware of that. And that goes into Axie Mate. Your energy and the feeling that you project into somebody, the feeling that you really emanate from yourself, that's your gravity. Women like to be around men who have a lust for life. If you're a guy where you're high energy, you're fun to be around, you're interesting, you're attractive, it seems like other people like to be around you, yeah, girls are going to want to be around you. Yeah, we, look, we can look at somebody like, you know, that's a rock star. Yeah, I, have that, I have that in a few slides. Now, Steven Tyler. Yeah, Steven Tyler could have no game, but he's on stage, he's got 2,000 people in front of him, he's a singer, he's artistic. Artists notice stuff about the world, that's what makes him an artist. To be, art, to be artistic, you have to pay attention, you have to be perceptive. Women, you know, quote unquote, like that. The guy that pushes pencils and paper in an office, give a fuck. I'm not saying to quit your job, but maybe, maybe some of you should quit your job. Maybe some of you should, honestly. I don't know. I mean, that's probably terrible advice, but maybe you should. Axiom nine. Sex is 90% psychological, 10% mechanical. Now this, is, now, this is a big, big difference with men and women. This is a big difference. You know, Steve, I remember a conversation yesterday. Steve knows this. Okay? For men, you have a woman. You have a beautiful, voluptuous body in front of you. You're in, it feels good, you're out, oh, that was great. That could last like two minutes. All right, well, I'm going to give myself a couple of time. Maybe I can do that again. That, and you're, you, you're mostly satisfied oftentimes. Like, that. okay, that was great, cool. For women, sex is psychological. Yeah, they want a guy with a hot, they want a guy who can fuck, they want a guy who's hot. But the, the guys that make women crazy are the ones, again, that make them feel. They get in their head. You know, Ivan Throne has a great quote from his father, actually. Women... They're not led to the bedroom by what they see, but by what they hear. Not by the eyes, but by the ears. Women can orgasm through hypnosis. You could talk to a girl. You can talk a woman into an orgasm. You could use nothing but your hand. You can use nothing that, but touching her, and she can have an orgasm. A woman can, if you know how to talk, if you have that level of sort of sexual hypnosis, a woman can come rubbing on your thigh. You could be dry humping each other, and she can have an orgasm. Now, what is that speaking to? Sex is psychological. It's the internal game that you've applied and you know, essentially projected into her, and now she's just buying accordingly. You're playing with fantasy. It's, a, it's an imagination game. It's not just, here I am, I'm hard now. All right, let's fuck. Now, are there women that will do that? Yeah, there are. But as soon as a woman encounters some man that can play her sexual imagination, oh God, is she going to be attached to him? Because he's going to stand out over everybody else. Everyone else. And that goes to Axiom 10. A man of imagination, that's the sexiest man in the world. Steven Tyler's like 70 years old. I guarantee you he still gets groupies. And this is not a guy that we classify necessarily as being like alpha looking. He's got a flowered shirt on. He's got scarves. He's got all this shit. I'm like, he's kind of effeminate looking. But you know what? He's passionate. He's a singer. He's artistic. He's a ph phenomenal rocker. Uh, yeah, women are attracted to that because art stimulates the imagination. Women, this is why women, over every other kind of man, women will always go for artists. Women will go insane for artists. Again, why? Because you are a man of imagination. And they're hoping, they're hoping that you're going to expand their reality some way. Cognitively, sexually, psychologically, seeing things differently, feeling new things, something. That's a sensuous experience. Axiom 11. If you want love, be love, but don't need love. What does that mean? I like to be in love. I like to love things. Every woman I've ever been with, whether I knew her for an hour or for a year, I was in love with her. And every woman that I was ever with, I had more or less a positive experience with. I have nothing to complain about. 
But I didn't love them because I wanted them to love me back. I loved them because I could. Because I could. Because why would I not? Why would I not? Why would I not increase the imagination there? Why would I not increase my reality that way? If you're wanting love out of validation, you're wanting the mommy girlfriend, you're wanting your wife to approve of you, you're wanting that woman to make you feel like you're a man, you're always going to be in the inferior position. It goes back to that lust for life. If you have a lust for life, if you're essentially infinite in that way that you express yourself, what do you have to lose? You could, you could walk out, you could leave, we could break up. It's not going to affect my capacity to love anything. Oh, I'm hurt. Yeah, I miss you. I can go love someone else. I can love something else. There's infinite things for me to you know, ex find joy in. You're not the only thing. You know, but again, what do men do? The woman becomes the thing that's the mission, the object, the idol. And if I could just have her, if I could have this one girl, I could have my fancy. Oh, well, now I can love. Now I've learned how to love. That's okay when you're 15. That's okay. That, you know, you're 15, you're in high school, middle school, whatever. Yeah, you got, you got puppy love. You can't stop thinking about the person. But a lot of men, they never mature past that. And then they get hurt once or twice, and now they have a fear of loss. And they never really knew how to love in the first place. They just wanted to be validated back. Axiom 12, 13, 14. So I put these together because they're you know, complementary to each other. Axiom 12, you want to be her man, not her child. This is basic, and this just speaks to what you've probably all seen many times. The men where they're led by their wives, they're led by their women. They're looking for her to provide the direction. Yeah, I had an experience, like, this was a few years ago. I remember I was going on, I went on this date, and I felt like sort of going out this myself. So I told the girl, I want you to dress up fancy. I want you to wear this color. We're going to go here. Like, make yourself look amazing. I just told her what to do, because what, why not? And she got there, and she's like, I love the fact that you had a plan. The last guy I went on a date with, we literally argued for like an hour about where we're going to go eat. And you know, like very typical, like millennial, Generation Z, this like stupid dating story she told me. Uh, and every woman I, I've, I've been with for the past, you know, like six, seven, eight, you know, going on 10 years, it's always the same thing. I love that you plan. I love that you, you know, you, you basically gave me direction. You, know, you, weren't, you weren't asking me, well, what do you want? You know, I, I, I always joke around this all the time you know, on Twitter, but I'm like, if you're, if, if you're a woman, you know, like if you're asking her, like, you know, like, oh, what, what do you want to eat? Tell her what she's going to eat. Tell her to have this on the menu. And obviously, don't tell her, you know, this is not dominating a person. There's, different, oh, they're domin There's a difference between being domineering and dominating. Women like men that provide direction because, again, it gives them that sense of satisfaction, security, safety, familiarity. If you're in that position of being a simp, you're going to be treated like one. And this goes into Axiom 13. She either looks up to you or down at you. It's one or the other. There's no between on this. If you are a leader, if you have all those qualities, women are going to look up to you. They're going to brag about you. They're going to speak you know, well of you to their girlfriends, to other men. They're going to look at other men and be like, okay, that, maybe that guy, oh, that guy's cute, but he's not like my man. You know? And guys who've never experienced this are like, that doesn't exist, that's bullshit. I'm like, yeah, it fucking does. You just, you've never been that guy. You've never been that guy in the position where the woman actually loves you and looks up to you. You've been the guy where you, she knows that you're replaceable. And any man can be that guy, but you have to reorient yourself to how you run your relationships, obviously. Axiom 14. Don't ever put women on pedestals, but you can put her above other women. Women like to feel special. That, that's like the princess fantasy. It goes back to kind of being the beast. Now I'm this princess, I'm this girl. Women know when men have options. They know that. Women can tell when they're with a man, when they're around a man, where, you know what, this, this guy, he has his pick of girls. He has his pick of women. You know, he has abundance that way, however you want to say it. They know that. And they also have that desire, and this is sort of like the bad boy fantasy. Well, you know, maybe with me it will be different. Maybe with me I'll stand out above all the rest. Yeah, and that's, you know, that is something that, I'll, say, I'll phrase it this way. Men, you know, within the sphere that we talk about, we forget that women have their own world. Women want to stand out. Women compete with each other. They compete with each other on beauty, on intelligence, on, you know, who's the best girl, who's the girl that's most like. It's all a popularity game of queen bees and wannabes. Women have their own competitions that way. So to get the attention of a man that they look up to, and that man is the affirmation of like, oh, wow, I'm really special to him, that's the ultimate desire. That's like the whole world to them. That means a lot. Women always want attention from strong men. Always. That never changes. That never, ever, ever changes. So if you can be that man for her, good. If you, can, if you put her above other women, wonderful. She's always going to be attached to you. If you put her above yourself, well, now we're back to the square one problems. And so we get to the end of the axioms, axiom 15. Whether you love one woman or many women, be the man they cannot be without. Now, I said this to George last night. You want to be irreplaceable, incomparable, and infinite. You want to be something that she can't ever trade up, 
there's, if you walk away, she's not gonna get you again. There's not another guy that's gonna step into your shoes and well, this guy's better than the old guy, and fuck him. That's not gonna happen. And this plays upon the fear of loss, it does. You can say, well, you know, she, she, she fears losing you, it's dread game. Like, you don't wanna make her dread losing you constantly. The point is not to have her in a place of fear. But the point is to make her realize that you stand out above the rest, and again, you are that man who's exceptional. You're not boring and predictable. You're not like other guys. And you're not someone where she can look at you and trade Joe for Bobby, and Bobby's just because Joe. That's the ideal man. And that's like essentially the female fantasy. It's the man that is all things. If you read a romance novel, any kind of Harlequin romance novel, I suggest every guy read, just read one. Just grab it off the shelf and read it. It's always the same story. It's the guy who, he's like the tallest, the strongest, the most intelligent, the best looking, kind of rough, kind of tender, kind of a bad boy. Everybody looks up to him. Renegade, really perceptive, really gets shit. Uh, is always in like a struggle against the world. It's out for justice. It's kind of heroic, kind of an anti-hero. He's basically like every single characteristic of men all jammed into one thing. And then he meets this girl. And he's usually like really sexually, of course, you know, uh, successful as well. All the women want to be with him. He's got his pick. But he meets this girl. Well, this girl's special to him. And she stands up with all the other girls. It's the same story over and over and over and over and over again. It never changes. And it's this guy. And who is he? He's a man. Capital M. That's who he is. Any of you can be that if you choose to, provided you do the work. So we've come to the end. I'm actually, wow, I actually got through the whole thing. I'm impressed. Questions? <laughs> Who wants to ask something? Right oh, there you go. All right. Hey, AJ. Oh. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I was asking, could you expand a little, just a little bit into the um, thing you said about the Indian guy who built the Taj Mahal? Because mm -hmm. um, the whole like kind of like one-itis and really being in love with someone and choosing to be kind of monogamous. Because we have this uh, modern story of the Taj Mahal, like Jeff Bezos, who kind of like built Amazon and I kind of like a complicated situation. Yeah. It's like a, there, there's a lot of risk. Yeah. Uh, so, if you could expand on that. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So I, this is something where like, I, I'll, I'll be as blue pill as I want with this. I, like I said before, I like being in love. I like loving a person. Like I enjoy the hell out of it. It's amazing. If you, it feels good. I, I enjoy loving someone. I like romance. But I was that person before I met her. You know, Jeff Bezos, he got successful. He's a billionaire. Well, now women, women want to be with him for his money. I was romantic when I was 19 and living out of my car. And women still wanted to be with me because of how I made them feel. Something like you know, the Taj Mahal, the guy built that for his wife that he loved. He loved her. That pair-bonded relationship between a man and a woman, that can be a very special thing. It's okay to acknowledge that. That's not lame to acknowledge. That can be an exceptional thing. And we idolize that because every man, every woman on some level, we want someone that cares about us. We want someone that is sort of the stability and energy to our being. We want someone that can, we can understand and that uh, can make us understood. We want that contrast, we want that delight, we want that sexual experience, we want that stability, we want to go on an adventure with somebody. We want those things, that's okay to want that. Now, you know, with, obviously with one night is, can you fuck that up? Oh, that can be fucked up so many different ways. How many different ways can a relationship break down? You know, who knows? Infinity, it's infinity because you're all infinite. You're all infinite, you can fuck things up infinite ways. No shit. So do you want to take the risk or not? That's up to you, what are you willing to lose? Anyone that knows you can hurt you. Your bros, your best friends, who maybe they know your shameful secrets, your shit, they, your bros could fuck you up if they want to. They can completely destroy you. Any woman that knows you a little bit can destroy you. That, any woman you know, you could destroy. You know, we, oftentimes we hear the horror stories and the guys that get divorce raped. There's also the stories of the men that fucking murder their wives. There's the men that beat the shit out of their wives. There's the men that you know, get a girl pregnant and they walk away. Men and women do bad things to each other all the time. It doesn't change. You know, if you define the opposite sex only by their, evil, by their evils and their you know, proclivity to do, you know, to do malevolence, you're going to see hell all around you. There's also people that have good relationships, and marriage is good. And, you know, and, and Jewish, I was saying Judaism, I'm Jewish. In Judaism, soulmates are a real thing. It's this a, a legitimate belief the person that you marry is the other half of you. And Jews have a pretty high success rate for marriage. You can say, oh, that's fucking lame and stupid. You know what? Jews are pretty fucking rich, and we run a lot of shit. So I guess we're doing something right, to be like really blunt about it. Um, yeah, f fucking facts, okay? Fucking facts. That's okay to idolize that. 
Is there a delusion attached to that? Yes, absolutely. Does that stem from social conditioning? No, it doesn't. That stems from probably the first guy and the first girl ever where five million years ago, it's like, oh, I, want fucking, I want to fuck that girl. And then he fucked her and he's like, you know, I actually like being around her too. Shit, okay. You know, and then he probably hit me, he had to kill a bunch of fucking people. It's like, you know, to keep, you know, these men get jealous. Same way women do. Cool. Cool. Apparently that's worked for pretty much most of civilization. Christianity, Judaism. Um, you know, in Islam, you can have multiple wives, but you have to be able to financially fucking be able to afford it. You know, Mormons, historically, you could have multiple wives. You got to be able to afford it. You got to have money. So, you know, that can work too. But again, it goes back to that pair bonding of like people like to be with people. And that's cool. And that inspires a lot of art, a lot of creativity, a lot of great things. So, like, what you're so wonderful. You know, Bezos' situation, he's a fucking nerd that got rich, and now he's with some girl that fucked a bunch of athletes, and now she's trying to get a bunch of money. Yeah, you know, he has no game, honestly. Like, you know, to be very busy, he has no game. You know, but he's probably never really been a man. He was that guy who compensated for all of his lacks by, well, I can fucking have company. You know, Bezos in an actual situation amongst men, he'd probably be fucking, you know, with the shoulders turned in, like not saying shit. You know, and, you know, and, and the irony would be too that, you know, his woman would probably go fuck the guy that's tall and is more of a man than him. Because, why? Because women like men. Women don't like money. Women like men that happen to have money. So, you know, whether you want to be taken advantage of or not, your fear of loss, you're going to have to decide that for yourself. Um, you know, men that don't want to participate in that game, you don't have to, but don't think you're brave for not doing something. You know, all things that can hurt us require bravery. Everything. If you're going to take a risk, you're going to suffer, that requires you to be brave. You know, do women like courage? Yeah. Do men like courage? Yeah. What is courage? It's you applying your strength upon the world, not just saying that you're strong. That's the defining aspect of reality. So, I mean, I'm always going to consider that this kind of defective, honestly, you know, personally. Like, would I think of the guys that way where, oh, everyone want to get married. You're a fucking coward, dude. You're, you're fundamentally a coward. But what you're saying is that I don't want to participate in something that could hurt me. You're going to get hurt anyway, regardless. So, you know, so, so, you know, like, I have nothing really more to say to that. Could you elaborate on the concept of being dominant versus being domineering? A lot of people, mm. it's, it's a trigger word for so many people. Yeah. And it's because they don't understand it. So be, being dominant versus being domineering. So dominance is when, let's say, you have the frame. So if we're going to qualify dominance versus domineering, domineering, when, you, when man is trying to overtly control a situation, he's trying to tell the girl what to do. This is how it's going to fucking be. You've already failed. Dominance is the man that leads. And people will follow you by default because they like the direction you're going in. I have a very dominating personality. My girlfriend lets, kind of lets me, she, I do all the planning. I decide where we're going to go. I do the travel shit. I don't, I don't let her do that stuff because I don't want her to have the frame that way, nor do I really want to have her be the one where like, oh, baby, where are we going for dinner? Where are we going for the trip? Did you book the flight ticket? But why am I going to have her do that? You're with me. I'm not with you. So yeah, I'm, I'm dominant that way. And we go places. We do things. And she loves it. She doesn't have to think. Women like it when they don't have to think, and you do the thinking. You know, so like that, that's being like dominant in the positive. Being domineering in the negative is when you lack control, you're basically blind to her nature, you're not seeing shit, and then you're in a situation where you're not getting what you're, you're not getting what you want, she's not getting what she wants from you, and now you're trying to verbally sort of negotiate a hard line of like, here's how it's going to be, this is what I want. And yeah, there's times when you have to lay down the law occasionally that way. If that becomes your way of being, where you're trying to, you know, overtly, explicitly practice control, you've already lost. Yeah, and that's where she's going to go and cheat with somebody else. You know, my husband, he's fucking, he, like, you know, it's, it's, I already know what the conversation's going to be. You know, my husband, like, he's, like, she's going to use the negative. He's so, he's so fucking dominating. He tries to control everything. He doesn't pay attention to this. It's going to be the same complaints over and over again. And she's going to go and fuck the guy who, who listens to her, gives her a fucking foot massage, and then tells her, you know, like, I, I really love, you know, when you, you, know, you say this, that. Women like sensitivity. They like gentleness. If you're a strong man, you can practice being gentle. If you're a weak man, you can fake trying to be strong, but she's going to know you're faking it. So that's how I would differentiate the two. It's, it's different between leadership versus just trying to be controlling. Yeah, fundamentally. So yeah, I had a question about what you said earlier, that slide regarding, um, it's a previous slide. It's about um, yeah. don't pedestalize, pedestalize women, but you can put her above other women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So axiom number 14 there, do you think that that has the potential of being a slippery slope in the sense that if you put her above other women, then, you know, you'll, you know, you'll slowly start to see her in ways that 
um, you know, doesn't that she, that 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 she doesn't deserve, right? So yeah. like her value would like uh, irrationally start to slowly increase in your eyes, and lo and behold, after a while, um, you'll see her as above yourself, and then you know that's just uh, a road to disaster. That's like one itis and all the stuff that leads to disaster. Do you think that's a slippery slope? You know, here's the thing, like with a slippery slope argument, like everything's a fucking slippery slope. Everything's a slippery slope. Everything. So like, oh, you put her above the moon. Well, she might end up above you. She, she, that could happen. Yeah. You could, you, know, you could tell her, you could do the opposite. You could be like, don't ever put woman on a pedestal. Every woman's replaceable. Okay, well, if you want someone to be devoted to you in a monogamous situation, but you're telling her that she's replaceable, uh, why the fuck is she gonna be with you? Exactly. Like you're, you're expecting devotion from her where she's gonna be super attached and super loyal and you know, worship you at your feet, wherever the fancy is, but you want her to feel like she's something you can cast aside. That doesn't reconcile. It doesn't. You know, anyone, that's, it, anyone that's in a marriage, let's say, is, is hopefully some of you are married and it's successful. If your wife feels like you're going to walk away from her given time and she doesn't mean anything to you, you don't mean anything to her. You know, so, I mean, th this is where, like, a, this is like where the red pill is, gets total bullshit, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, 50% of marriages fail. You know, would, you, would you fly in a plane if 50% of planes crashed? I'm like, no, I wouldn't, but you know, in a marriage, you're the one flying the fucking plane. That's your fucking plane. That's your relationship. So if you fucked yourself, or oh, I made my wife run me, that's your fault. You let her do that. Like, you let her fucking do that. You know, like, oh, so like, that's what the, you know, like I said, it's an axiom. Yeah, you make her feel special. Now she's too special. Whose fault was that? It's your fault. It's fundamentally, as a man, everything's your fucking fault. And if you, any of you have ever been a, with a girlfriend relationship, how oftentimes, have you ever heard this ever? Well, this is your fault. Women will blame you for shit that you know you didn't do, this, they'll do it as a joke, they'll do it seriously. Women will blame him for fucking everything. And you know why? Because fundamentally, they want you to run everything. But you're not. You're letting them run shit. And then you're fucking yourself over again and again and again and again. So, you know, there's no, you can't, like, is there such thing as relaxing? Yeah, you can relax when you act like a man all the time, irrespective of how she acts. You can't re relax if you're always reacting to her. That's stressful. So, I mean, like, your question, yeah, is that slippery slope? Everything's slippery slope. A lot of the Red Pill guys, they're, like the, they're super hardcore autistic. They're going to be dead in 40 years. No one's going to remember their shit because they're dead. They didn't reproduce. So, fuck them. Fuck all of them. Yeah, you know, I don't give a shit. Um, if you want to, you know, pass on a legacy, teach men something, be a father, be a leader, just be a man, man amongst men, you're going to have to teach men useful skills that have some recursive continuation. It can't just be be self-serving, be hedonistic. Uh, I don't know. Go, go fuck Thai women somewhere. Um, you know, in Thailand, uh, great, bro, like, great. Like, you're not building anything. Like, you're not building shit. You know, like, you know, like, but Poland's, I'll use Poland as an example. Poland's had a really rough fucking history. Really rough fucking history. All you guys are Polish, you know this. Yeah, your, your forefathers, your grandfathers, when shit was bad, during the deluge, whatever, they didn't fuck off and say, you know what, fuck, this is hard. And we're being attacked and like, oh shit, I got responsibilities now. And we're losing, you know, like one in four people are dead. I'm gonna go fuck off and fuck Chinese women. <laughs> You know, enjoy the decline, motherfucker. Sorry, I'm out. Like, I'm out. Fuck. Hey, are you fucking kidding me? So, yeah, slippery slope. F fuck the fucking slope. Take a bulldozer and run the fucking slope over. I don't know what that really means, but it's a metaphor for, like, you're going to lead your own fucking life. If you don't want to fucking deal with fucking slope, bulldoze the fucking slope, build a fucking palace on it, sit on your metaphorical fucking throne, and, you know, fundamentally, at the end of the day, this is how it's going to fucking be. Done. Yeah. Give it up. <laughs>